Digital Foundry is proudly sponsored by Omen's new wireless range of mice, keyboards and headsets. With the release of new and pure cards from NVIDIA, DLSS has also been updated to version 2.1, which adds in a new ultra performance mode to Death Stranding and Control. This ultra performance mode allows DLSS to work with even lower internal resolutions than before, so it makes ultra high output resolutions much more viable on modern GPUs, including 8K. So in this video here, I will look into the quality and performance characteristics of this new DLSS mode on the RTX 3090 at 8K, as well as examine the effectiveness of that ultra performance mode at smaller resolutions on the RTX 2060. So where should we start? First, I can say with great conviction that we at DF often find native 4K resolution a bit of a waste for graphics performance. We would rather utilize that GPU performance used to render a native 4K image instead for higher graphical effects and things like ray tracing. Then you can take that image and make it higher resolution looking with good reconstruction techniques like DLSS. That is quadruply the case for 8K resolution. Really, no one in their right mind should actively target native 8K resolution, excluding those games with older or much more simplistic performance requirements. A real native 8K is incredibly performance intensive, so even the dummy thick and powerful RTX 3090 is humbled by a real native 8K. For example, in control, with the highest settings and ray tracing maxed out, the RTX 3090 produces 9 FPS in this scene. That same scene running with DLSS in ultra performance mode, reconstructed up to 8K, is 50 FPS, so an increase of 450% over native 8K. This is made possible by rendering an image at an internal resolution lower than the output one, while using information from previous frames combined with real-time AI calculations to create an 8K image. In the usual performance mode in DLSS 2.0, it had a 4 times multiplier for resolution, so internally 1080p could be brought up to 4K, and 4K up to 8K. Ultra performance mode below this made available for DLSS 2.1, has a 9 times resolution multiplier. For 4K, that would be a 720p internal resolution, and for 8K, that is a 1440p internal resolution. Now, before I get into the nitty gritty of the analysis here, I have to mention how this video has at all been made, as it's different than usual. None of my capture card devices support 8K recording in a native fashion, unfortunately. Try as I might, it just wouldn't work. So for this video, I have done the 8K recording by utilizing the 8K 30fps hardware encoded recording offered on the RTX 3090 in GeForce Experience, and there the bitrate is set to its highest. So the B-roll in this video is 8K and shows off that resolution well at 8K here on YouTube. I think this is our first 8K video actually but it is limited to 30 FPS. So, so all that image quality footage you see here is stuck at 30 FPS, even though the performance is going to be higher with DLSS on. The performance capture that I use in this video, like this recording here, is actually done with a capture card at 4K60 without VSync and using FCAT. In that way, it doesn't affect the performance while recording, but it also will have a slight crop zoom on the image to hide the FCAT overlay. So, performance recordings in this video are not representative of the image quality of 8K native or 8K DLSS. But enough of that, and on to the performance. Performance on the RTX 3090 is very different between these two games. Control is one of the heaviest games out there for the GPU with ray tracing enabled, hence how it is 9 FPS at a real native 8K. In general though, when playing with DLSS and Ultra Performance mode on the RTX 3090, Control's calmer moments of wandering around the oldest house will be in the 50s usually, and pretty great for the VRR window on an 8K or 4K display, but it's obviously not enough for a 60Hz VSync lock or anything like that. Getting into combat in the heavier scenes in the game brings the frame rate down into the 40s, where it generally hangs for the duration of combat. And I saw that across a number of combat scenarios. And that Corridor of Doom, by the way, yeah, that's also in the 40s when you walk through it. 
So it's playable enough performance, but not up to my standards that I have usually at lower resolutions, looking for 60. In control while using the ultra performance mode, I also note a bug that can occur that I think happens when you change the output resolution while also in game. This manifests as the GPU utilization decreasing sharply and the frame rate tanking when you look in certain directions of levels like right here before I enter the Corridor of Doom, or right here on this lookout point over the research area. This changing resolution bug can also happen in 4K with the Ultra Performance mode there, which is very odd indeed, as the internal resolution is 720p there. We're starting the game though, and having the desired output resolution being fixed already at the game start fixes this problem. With that in place, I saw the GPU utilization go up like it should at ultra performance mode in 4K and going up from the 20s or 40s to 120 FPS or so. So that is something to keep in mind and perhaps it's a bug that needs fixing. Death Stranding is completely different to control as it does not have next generation graphical techniques like ray tracing. So at its core, the game is just not as heavy on the GPU. In fact, at native 8K, it manages to be above 30 FPS on the RTX 3090. With Ultra Performance Mode DLSS, the RTX 3090 has its FPS in excess of 60 FPS at all times often in the 70s or 80s depending upon what you're looking at and what is happening on screen. Even the game's more expensive cutscenes, which artificially lock themselves to 60 FPS, fare really really well and hit their locked 60 FPS target. Basically this game runs really fast and is enough for 60 FPS at 8K output, but it also sees less of a performance advantage from using this DLSS performance mode, as performance is increased by 130% in this game over native 8K. This less than increase in performance though makes sense as the cost of ray tracing per pixel in a game like Control is decidedly higher than the cost of compute or rasterization per pixel driving the visuals in a game like Death Stranding. So Control's performance is more sensitive to resolution. Moving into image quality here, let's first see what that ultra performance mode at 4K looks like in comparison to its real internal resolution that is simply upscaled without DLSS. As expected based upon previous analyses, DLSS looks a lot better than its real internal resolution, with it completing lines of aliasing and many areas of the screen just looking so much better, like the edges of these lamps here or the hard edges of the books. If we zoom in on this vending machine here as well, we can see, like we expect, that DLSS adds in real detail and definition as well as better anti-aliasing. Interesting though is what DLSS does inside surfaces with ray trace reflections at high contrast. If you compare DLSS in stills versus the simple upscale, you can see how it cleans up noise and completes lines within that ray traced reflection. So it's a positive outcome. But if you set that image in motion like you would see in game, you can see that the DLSS image actually adds in a swimming pixels effect as a negative byproduct. So on most of all the edges in this image, or most of the detail, the image looks a lot better with DLSS. But high contrast inner surfaces here have negative swimming pixel noise. On average though, I'd say, like I said in previous videos, that it is a big win for clarity, anti-aliasing, and detail. But what does this all cost in performance? In comparison to the normal upscale with TAA, DLSS's runtime runs 18% worse. This is of course cheaper than using real resolution to gain this detail, but it shows how much more expensive DLSS becomes the higher the output resolution is. For example, the cost difference between using DLSS when outputting at 4K is decidedly less. You only lose around 6% performance when turning on DLSS at 4K. When changing the output resolution between 4K and 8K at the same internal resolution, we can see that there's a 3 GB increase in VRAM allocation as well. So I imagine this extra cost in VRAM and performance has to do with the fact that DLSS is just more expensive, as well as the fact that UI and post-processing buffers and MIP maps are all higher res at higher output resolutions. The comparison to native 8K though is why we are here, and that's where things get interesting, or perhaps not interesting depending upon your perspective. For one, native 8K as I see it destroys the GPU so much in control that it makes recording actually erratic. 
For example, every time I capture this scene on the 3090 using its built-in 8K encoding, it adds this video artifacting to the bottom of the screen, while the rest of the screen records correctly. So that's what I have to deal with. Secondly, native 8K is allocating nearly two times as much VRAM, so it's just hitting 20 gigabytes on the RTX 3090. DLSS's savings in VRAM and performance are very apparent as I've talked about, but image quality wise is where things are a little bit more muddy. When you zoom in on details, you can see how native 8K has absolutely perfect, untroubled image quality here. DLSS and ultra performance mode in comparison looks much, much less refined, where tiny details cannot resolve. Like look at the little flag on the desk here, which is legible and crisp in native and a lot less so in ultra performance mode. Or look at the vending machine here, where it just looks so different and under detailed in the ultra performance mode. Surfaces with heavy ray tracing details see the largest difference in my opinion, like the floor. Native 8K is essentially sending out nine times more rays here and feeding that into the denoiser. With one ninth the amount of rays being shot out, ultra performance mode with DLSS lacks all that precision in the reflection that you see with the native image. Such large scale differences that I'm showing here with zooms can be seen of course at normal distances on the screen between these two versions. That is not to say that ultra performance mode looks bad or something, it runs a lot better for sure, but I don't think it's actually comparable to the real native 8K. So that got me wondering, how much better is DLSS actually working here? I still think it's going to be improving the image. So I compared DLSS ultra performance mode at 8K to DLSS in quality mode at 4K. Both are using the same internal resolution, but with different output resolutions. When looking at those side by side, it's possible to see how ultra performance mode at 8K does actually yield better image quality features than the same internal res output at 4K. You can see how lines complete better or how detail is preserved. Like coming back to the vending machine here, where the little product bags inside look quite a bit better. So I think ultra performance mode will look better than resolutions between 4K and 8K, but that nine times resolution multiplier is asking for too much for it to be an approximate of 8K. The reconstruction just needs much more information and internal resolution to be comparable, which I could easily see by turning up the internal DLSS resolution to 4K in performance mode. That looked much more comparable to the real 8K with the same behaviors I've mentioned before in my previous video on DLSS in this game. But how about Death Stranding? When comparing to native 4K at first, it shows how much more detail, anti-aliasing, and fidelity that DLSS Ultra Performance Mode is actually adding to the image. So DLSS is indeed working like it should and doing a lot. When I compare to native 8K, it shows how, in this game at least, it is a much closer approximation to native 8K than we saw in Control where opaque texture detail like this on this rock here is reconstructed in a comparable way, something that wasn't there in control. But other screen elements are not as well done. Like take a look at here at this moss, which is comparable to 8K native I would say, but the rock above that moss is using a lower MIP entirely for the texture in DLSS and looks a lot less detailed as a result. Moving vegetation is another area where DLSS's 1 9th internal resolution cannot keep up, and vegetation comes out a bit dithered, blurred, and darkened even slightly in comparison to the real native 8K. In general side-by-sides, I think that this ultra performance mode in Death Stranding does better than it does in Control, but there are still a number of macro imperfections. One of which is in post-processing, where I think the now non-even integer upscaling, so 9 instead of 4 or 2, is causing the post-processing to shimmer more. Like here with SSR on this body of water. It is shimmering in motion quite a lot more than it does, for example, at quality mode at 4K, even though both of these modes are running at the exact same internal resolution. It is just that the resolution multiplier and integer scaling is different. This happens with all post-processing as I have found out, which now aliases more and does not look that great. So while opaque detail is much better looking than control in this mode in Death Stranding, other blemishes like this counterbalance that advantage. Now when going down to lower output resolutions on the RTX 2060, there's really only one expectation here. 
DLSS or any other reconstruction out there works better the higher the output resolution is and the higher the internal starting resolution is before reconstruction. So all the behavior and characteristics that I saw at 8K will be more pronounced at lower resolutions as reconstruction becomes less effective. Looking at 4K in control on the RTX 2060, at max settings, Ultra Performance DLSS is running 10 times faster than native resolution. The RTX 2060 here with its six gigabytes of VRAM is definitely choking at native 4K on top of all that shading load. So an even greater win than the 390 at 8K, but Death Stranding here is less of a win on the RTX 2060. Ultra Performance Mode is running here with an additional 120% more performance, so less of a win there. Image quality and control at this resolution is much like I expected and described before. DLSS is much less effective here at this resolution than it was at 8K. If you focus on any area of the screen with your eyes, you can see that native 4K looks light years beyond the Ultra Performance Mode for its presentation of edges, how anti-aliasing looks, and how detail is presented. The inner surface of high contrast reflections is just incredibly different looking. My opinion here is that this presentation is even further away from native than ultra performance mode was at 8K. Death Stranding though has more intriguing results. If you focus on areas of the image like the moss on the ground here, it shows how scarily similar opaque edges look and detail look in ultra performance mode. Considering the left image here is really 720p internally, these are just amazing results. Moving vegetation though is once again the weak spot where it can look darker, blurrier, and stippled on ultra performance mode, where 4K native with TAA is crisp, yet a little bit aliased I would say. Post-processing shows very similar issues that I saw at 8K, where depth of field at ultra performance mode in 4K has more shimmering and active aliasing than quality mode at 1080p even though both are utilizing the exact same internal resolution. There's just something about the scaling integer that this game's post-processing does not like at all. Just for curiosity's sake, I did look at what Ultra Performance Mode does at 1080p, and this here would be 640 by 360 internally, so a lower resolution than a number of original Xbox games. And it looks shockingly okay given how incredibly low resolution this is. If you look at the static elements of the screen, they sure look quite similar to native 1080p actually, but anything moving looks like it's motion blurred almost. Sam here, for example, who almost looks like he has a healthy dosage of per object motion blur applied to him. It's neat but not really recommendable given how amazing this game already runs on most GPUs, and especially those that have DLSS. Looking at all the results, I would conclude that Ultra Performance Mode at 8K is still not there. It looks better than 4K native in many aspects as I found out, but its output in control and its post-process aliasing in Death Stranding make it less than compelling. I honestly just think that 9 times multiplier is asking too much of DLSS, and it does not align properly with the internal pixel grid assumptions necessarily in every game. 8K is also light years away from being more common, and I think that normal DLSS modes starting at 4K internal resolution are a better bet to make 8K images. At below 8K, like 4K, I think it is novel and interesting just to see what type of image at all is produced there in the end, but it has its practical limits given the games we have right now. Perhaps it makes sense for those looking for 4K 120 in certain experiences, as long as the game's post-processing does not have problems like in Death Stranding. But still, I think that 9 times multiplier is still asking too much of DLSS in its current millisecond budget. But anyway, I think I have said enough and you should try it out on your own PC if you can. And if you did enjoy this video, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you're already a subscriber, then hit that little bell in the corner to be informed as soon as Digital Foundry posts a video. Oh, hey, look at that, 1 million subscribers. So thanks for that. And if you want to help us out, support us on Patreon to get years worth of Digital Foundry content available in high quality for download. And if you want to talk to me about DLSS, Write a comment below and follow me and Digital Foundry on Twitter. And as always, this is Alex, bidding you farewell and auf Wiedersehen. Featuring its new warp wireless technology, Omen's PC peripherals allow for lag-free gaming. From the 360-degree audio of its Omen frequency headphones, the 180-hour battery life of the vector mouse, and the 2.4 GHz connection of its spacer keyboard, Omen has you covered for the ultimate wireless experience.